you know, um, a lot of people believe that if you say that there is a feminine part of our God, that that is a counterfeit. And they talk about the Asherah pole, poles, you know, and um, the false female goddesses. Um, they talk about um, the things in the past when the Israelites went into apostasy. But I think what they forget is that um, there was also male apostasy gods and they were not nice gods, Molech, Baal. And, um, but I've heard people use as an excuse that because there were fake female gods, that there is no feminine aspect to our God. And that is not logical reasoning. So um, I want to talk about a little bit about why this feminine aspect of God being ignored is not the best for her people. Um, the spirit of God brooded upon the face of the waters. Brood is another word for a hen or a bird sitting on her little, on her eggs and waiting for them to hatch, which is what the feminine aspect of God did when she brooded over the face of the waters. Um, also, El Shaddai in Hebrew is the all breasty one. So this has been translated as a capital Lord, and it means to English um, translators, and I'm sure to others, God Almighty. In Akkadian, it is God of the mountains, but the feminine aspect of God is shown here in that she is the all-breasty one. So if we wanted to divide the deity into three aspects, the spirit of God brooding upon the face of the waters as a hand sitting on her eggs, as Jesus proclaimed in the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. So your destruction is coming. The feminine part of God is important. Um, the mountains and Akkadian are synonymous with breasts. So the feminine aspect of God is something that we need to take into account. I feel sorry for us because through the ages we have been led to believe that there are three male parts to God. So the Trinity is always male. This is not biblical. This is cultural. And to use the right brain and to be aware of the feminine aspect of God is what will bring us into alignment. Um, it is the old word that is now a new word and to be in the power of God we need to understand that there is both feminine and masculine parts to our God let us make mankind in our image after our likeness male and female he created them this is um the mother part of God that is so loving that if we were to understand it, our intimacy with God could grow. And I believe that when Ellen White said, toward the end of time, there will be new truth that is really old truth. I believe that this is a very big part. Um, 
we have to be loved by the mummy part of God to be close to her and to him. And lest you think that because in the book of John and other places in the New Testament, he is used for the spirit of God as a definitive translation, it is not. Check the Greek. The Greek is that one. They put he, for whatever their reasons were, I don't want to conjecture here, but the feminine part of God is a part that we need, a part that is real, a part that raises the dignity of womankind and makes her relationship to the Most High in its true light. We are not a lesser being. There is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, according to the epistle. We have to understand that the strength of our God, the God of the mountains, the El Shaddai, the all-breasty one, is ever with us. Her love and her kindness are beyond compare. And no, Mary is not a God. Mary is not a mediator. She is a counterfeit to the true um, goddess part of our God. And our mother part of God is not something that's fake just because it has been faked. It is not fake. So let us enter in to all parts of our God, the feminine and the masculine parts, which are all there for our love, our edification, and our power. And the power of the right brain is as important as the power of the left brain. So female and male created he them in God's own image.